Welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot, and of course, hello to my new people. We are going to take a look uh, back into the month of March. So this is that mid-month check-in that we like to do. It's a general reading, and it's a general energy type of reading. So we're not focusing just on the soulmates at this point. We're focusing on the big picture. Although, of course, if some soulmate messages come into it, that's fine too. Um, and as, as far as the reading itself, it is a general reading and it's going to be for all signs. We're just going to be taking a look, kind of the broad collective, um, everything that's going on. So it may not resonate with you. It's not going to resonate with everybody. But if it does, um, then you may want to look at some of the previous readings and just see if maybe some of those resonate also because we've got a pretty significant collective going here that um there's uh there's a, there's an energy to it so if it's you you may be part of that as well anyway we're going to go ahead and jump right in so we're checking to see kind of what the big picture uh energy is for march so this is that energetic backdrop um and just kind of seeing what is on tap for the rest of the month energetically and remember when we got in here earlier we saw um that there was definitely going to be some focus on equal give and take. So that's in all relationships. Again, not just focusing on that soulmate relationship, but that's a really global impact. So if you've got some kind of soulmate situation going on, and I know a lot of you do, um, then this is, uh, this is something that kind of permeates your entire life. So we've got the Page of Pentacles here, um, but it's coming out in reverse. So the Page of Pentacles, if we look at it in the upright, and just to kind of talk about this a little bit, the Page of Pentacles is a card of learning. It is a card of uh, someone being a learner, a student, someone who is open to the learning process. So when we see it here in reverse, what we have to worry about is that this uh, may be, it may signify less of a openness to learning process. So you may notice in yourself that it is tough to get engaged. Just something to think about. I guess let's see what comes out as we start to jump into that one. So we, um, with this format, and for those of you who have been watching for a while, you've seen the change in format. Um, with this format, we jump in and clarify uh, one question at a time, and it's a very high flow sort of reading. So instead of um, asking all the questions and then going back and clarifying, we kind of ask the question and then we jump in to dig a little deeper right then. So um, it started out as those snapshot readings that I would do just really quickly. And it turned out that um, so many of you contacted me and said you would prefer that, that uh, I knew it was time to do it a little bit more often. So we've got that page of pentacles. Remember, there may be a little bit of a less uptake of lessons right now. We've got the hermit. Okay, this explains why. So there's been a need to go and do some thinking, some going into your thinking cave, going and getting some things hashed out, worked out. And it may not be so much that you're not open to learning right now, but that you're focusing and kind of simmering somewhere else. Um, something definitely still isn't right. We have that with the Justice card in reverse and a sense of a lack of balance. There's this implication of a lack of balance, but not necessarily one that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, the one of hedgehogs, though, would suggest that you are about to open that door. So this is interesting. This isn't just this door. It is... Um, in a lot of cases, some of you have been struggling to let something go or to let someone go. And the advice that keeps coming for you is go ahead and leave that door open and then go about your business. Keep working on yourself and allow this uh, allow this door to stand open so that the your person can come walking back through it. But that's not all that's going to come back through this door once you're able to open it, because this is really going to be uh, helping you to reestablish some of that balance. Um, and this is, I think, part of what you're off learning in the hermit cave. So this hermit card isn't a bad thing. It is. Um, it's it's definitely a, it's a tool that you can use to to help further your lessons and your own learning. Um, there's a sense here that, uh, there's a sense here that, you know, really it's, I guess, I'm trying to figure out the best way to put this because there's, we've been talking a lot about the connectivity to your intuition, the connection with your inner, your higher self. 
And that's something that seems to be coming online here in the second half of March. This is kind of exciting. And that's as far as the cards want to go. I thought we were at the end and then I was like, no, I'm supposed to pull this one too. So um, sometimes I pull them out and I only get one just off the top. And sometimes it's the first couple or you never know. Um, but there is definitely this sense of reigniting a connection to your higher self and to your intuition. And so I would say that's a really positive thing. Um, we've got the King of Teacups. The King of Teacups is like the King of, of Cups in the standard or in the traditional tarot. It's water energy and it is about... Um, the, the King of Cups allows a lot of love but has a lot of integrity. So this is something that is, I would say, very positive. Very positive, very... Um, you know, looking forward in what I would say is a it's a good way. It's a good way. Um, the five of spears is something that you will have to watch out for. So this is the sort of thing that um, that will contribute to that not quite being awake from a learning perspective. That that sort of energy. So the five of spears is about sometimes engaging things that you don't necessarily. It's not going to be good for you to engage. It's not necessarily your best bet. Um, it is an, uh, a battle that is maybe not, um, not worth it, not worth fighting. So just something to think about there. Um, and we've also got this Ten of Cups card that is coming out again, and it's one that we've been seeing quite a bit of. So the Ten of Cups is, um, and it's also that water energy, it is the, it's that sense of something seeming like it's too good to be true so it's like you're going to wake up one day and you're going to be in a, a so much better of a mood um that it's going to surprise you a little bit and so you're going to be sitting there trying to figure out like what does this mean what should i be doing <laughs> with this information and um you know it, the the guidance here is to just kind of take it as it is take it for what it is um, when you see something that's too good to be true assess it and hold on, I want to grab the ones we want there. Um, the glow is strongest when they first turn over, but I want to finish up here too. Okay, so when you see it, go ahead and let it in. Um, but by the same token, when you have that day, go ahead and let it in and then see what it is. Because the Ten of Cups is all about really understanding what something is and then reacting accordingly. So taking each of these cards that came out in turn, we've got the Eight of Flowers. And this is fire energy in this deck. Flowers is uh, fire energy. So this is like the Eight of Wands in reverse. This is a reminder that things may still not be moving very quickly. Quickly. They may seem like they're moving quickly from a healing perspective, but in general, they won't be um, moving super quickly. It's going to be more, uh, that may be what gives you a little bit of this frustration. It causes this five of spears energy. Then we've got this page of hedgehogs. Okay, so this is like you got there. Okay, we see this page of pentacles. So hedgehogs, I should have said earlier, is um, earth energy. It's like pentacles. And so this is the page of hedgehogs in the upright. And so here we started with this page of pentacles in the reverse, which was implying that maybe you weren't ready to learn just yet. There was something that we know you're off in the thinking cave trying to find some balance. And so there's a little bit of uh, perhaps even dissonance in your mind makes it tougher to learn, but you end in a very positive place. This has you um, looking forward to doing some learning. This has your mood kind of shifting up. And actually we see here the two of teacups, which is all about the flow of emotion and the, um, the it's a feeling of partnership and it's an, it's a sense of you attracting partnership. So that's something to think about. If that is something that is um, that you consider to be a positive thing, um, be aware that you are going to be attracting people. And if you don't consider it to be positive, if you're trying to stay away from a specific situation, I know some of you are, or if you're trying to um, kind of be very be intentional about it, you know, intentional about things, your advice is to, to definitely be conscious of what you're doing, know why you're making the decisions you're making. And that's one of the messages that, um, that was coming out with the Ten of Cups before throughout the other readings is to understand why you're doing what you're doing. 
and just kind of go with what you see there. So that if something really does seem to be incredible and too good to be true, and you get in and you take a closer look at it, and you're like, I really see nothing wrong with this. There is every reason why you should be able to move forward. So that's that's something that just needs to be said, whether it's a person, a job, um, you know, a hobby, a situation, who knows? There is something positive that's, that's coming your way, and when you see it, you may not quite trust it um, as much as you turns out you look like you can. Um, <clears throat> so let's see here. Uh, I want to see, this is kind of the, what you're swimming in from an energetic perspective, but let's see what kind of energy is actually going to make it your way here in the second half of March. We've got the King of Pentacles. And so the King of Pentacles is very, this is a great card. The King of Pentacles has a lot of that balance, feels deserving of the position, you know, is the head of household for that Ten of Pentacles household, which, as I like to say, is that household where everybody has what they need, resources are covered, needs are met. Um, and so you've got this King and Queen of Pentacles that head up that household. And the King of Pentacles is um, is very is very well resourced. Uh, the businessman, the um, but there's a lot of ways that this comes in, but what I'm really feeling is that confidence of that feeling I should be where I am. So that is fabulous. So anybody who's been kind of struggling with a little bit of that um, imposter syndrome, I know sometimes that's something that's been plaguing folks within this collective. And they'll be saying, listen, I know on an intellectual level, I am prepared for this and that I was hired for a reason. Or that I'm in this situation for a reason, but I'm still so nervous they're going to figure out I'm not ready yet. Okay, so we've got the Page of Spears. The Page of Spears, um, air energy, and it's this, this is that skittish energy that makes you not sure about things, not know if you're truly deserving of this. So the fact that you walk away deserving of this and feel like you're in a good, confident place at the end of this month does not mean that the fear doesn't exist. You're still working against something that makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, makes you not so sure. We see here that there is a continued perceived inequity somewhere. So this is the six of teacups and it's an area that we were focusing on for this month. So as we're looking through this month, there is a continued focus here, but we see that you're still seeking that balance and you're off in your thinking cave, which means you're not being reactive. This is more of a, okay, what I see that this inequity is still here. I'm not in a position to necessarily fix this right away. So what do I have to do to solve it? What do I have to do to fix it? We have the King of Spears, and that is that act of stepping back and taking a look at the big picture, understanding what it truly is um, that, it, that you need to do. You have the Nine of Spears and the Ten of Spears that have come out together here. So this is a lot of anxiety, consternation, remembering the pain of a difficult ending. That's really what's happening here. So something comes back to you um, from a memory standpoint. And I'm just going to put these, um, this nine and 10 of spears on either side of this king of spears, because as you're considering your decision, or um, as you're considering something, you are having the big picture come back to you. When you take a step back and you look at the big picture, you're going to discover that there are some things that um, in that picture that you've intentionally maybe not been looking at. Um, you've got the three of hedgehogs here. This is a sig this signifies somebody not quite working with you as well as maybe you'd like for them to be. That's part of what you're going to see as you're stepping back to look at this big picture too. Now, what you do about that is not necessarily already decided. Um, you also recognize here that you've got um, some healing. You've got some healing that you've been doing and that you need to continue to do. The thing is, when you notice, when you take a step back and you notice all of what is not quite right about this picture, you're also going to notice what is. And one of the things that you'll notice is some of the healing that's already taken place. So when you see, hey, I see that there's a lack of cooperation here, or I see that there's something here that needs to change, you're going to realize, oh, hold on, I am no longer inclined to handle things the way that I might have just a few short months ago. So despite the fact that I'm feeling this anxiety, that I'm feeling this uh, consternation is really the best word I can come up with there. It's, it feels 
like consternation. It's that churning sort of feeling, you know, and despite the fact that I feel that, I recognize that I've got some additional healing to do and it's not just them. There's an element of this that is um, you're going to be able to solve because of this awareness that um, they don't have to have the same kind of awareness. So this could be people at work. Um, this could be people in your social group. could be um, romantic, but the feeling is of more than one person. It's like a small society. Um, okay, so we've got the nine of flowers, which is like the nine of wands. This is where, yes, this is where your healing uncovers for you. Oh, I love this. Your healing uncovers for you where you have um, done some healing and where you, you're you able to take that step back, look at the big picture, see some things that don't quite make you very happy, recognize that there is ongoing un, uh, unbalanced behavior see that you have more healing that you need to do and also see where you are now still guarding a wall that no longer needs to be guarded so that's what that nine of flowers is um, and it's like a nine of wands in the traditional tarot but the cool thing is this is you recognizing it this is you realizing that um that maybe there are some things that you, where you've really developed and you don't you you really no no longer handle things the way that you once did. That is a big part of this message. So congratulations in advance. Um, I know I probably shouldn't say congratulations in advance, but at least it, it, this doesn't say how you're going to handle the situation, but it does say how you're going to recognize that you know better than you used to. So there's that. Um, and, and let's see what it is, w this last question over here, um, what it is that you can be doing to best go into this energy. What can you be bringing into this energy that's going to help you out the most? That nine of pentacles. Okay, sorry for the interruption, just somebody at the door. So we have the nine of pentacles that has come out, okay? And the nine of pentacles is, this is a card of independence emotional independence so you guys have seen this one come out quite a bit here lately and it's been about it's always about developing just a healthy level of emotional independence so that's what you can be um, seeking and kind of focusing on and what you want to channel as your energy as you move through this space here so it looks like you know you're coming into this time with I'm not really quite ready to engage my lessons yet, but when we look more deeply into it, we see it's not because you're just giving up. It's because you're digging in. It's this actively engaging, this desire to make things balanced, to um, move toward a better solution that doesn't hurt and allows you to solve that pain. But where you're ending is in a place where you are very open to lessons, but you're also very open to the concept of partnership. So there's no stopping you with that kind of energy. And we see here um, that there's a lot of other good going on as well with your ultimate desire to or ability to accept the fact that you deserve this. And it kind of has you coming past your um, your imposter syndrome or that feeling, any feeling that you're having where there's anxiety, you are stepping back and taking a look at it and saying, okay, I see this anxiety. I see that everything doesn't work out. I realize that I've done a lot of healing and I realize that I still have some to do. There are some things that you can now change your perspective on or your behavior about. And um, it just leads you to so much more of a balanced outcome. This is a fantastic sort of thing. So then the, re the resulting um, answer when I asked the question about what you could bring was the nine of pentacles. It's that emotional independence. So it doesn't mean that you need to do things without help or that you need to uh, not ask for help. What it really means is um, it's, a, it's a need to allow yourself to not lean on or to be emotionally independent and really to be able to make your own decisions with a consciousness about it. Not so much that you want to shun others, just that you want to celebrate your, that's it. You really want to be able to celebrate yourself because what you're going to see is every barrier between you and your current energy and this energy of the, the king of pentacles. This is the king of hedgehogs, which is that same energy, but in reverse. And the thing that sticks out here once again is that sense of I deserve to be here. So this is looking right down the barrel of I don't deserve to be here and saying 
I have <laughs> I have the self-worth and I am absolutely ready to be here. This is the queen of hedgehogs. And when the queen of hedgehogs says I deserve to be here and I have every right, I've deserve I I've earned this. Um that's that's a very powerful statement and it's really you coming back and saying, "Okay, I recognize not all of the ground has been covered, but some very important ground has, and I'm, I've made some development here. The Empress is all of the queens put together, and part of it, one of the most amazing energies of the Empress is the Queen of Hedgehogs, because it's got that feeling of self-worth, and that's just a very basic feeling of things being right within yourself. It is a balance within yourself that is so strong that the balance outside is a little bit less important. Here is the thing that you may be going to want to be working on. So this is the queen of teacups and it is a tendency to, um, to want to give more than you're receiving. A tendency to, um, it's an imbalanced type of love that allows someone to take advantage of them. So the six, the six of teacups over here that um, that we see in the reverse that's not in balance that's the sort of thing that we want to look at and guard against and not so much that you're going to solve everything all in one fell swoop just that you're going to become aware of it so if you've got somebody who for example isn't speaking to you right now and um and it's then the right thing is to reach out and swallow your pride you'll be able to reevaluate that and try and determine if that's the right thing to do. Conversely, if it's a situation where you haven't been properly respected and there hasn't been an equal give and take of energy, then you've got to accept to your, or you've got to admit to yourself that it's not necessarily right to reach out and um, to cave in, to be the one that always makes contact. So it's, it's not, um, it's not always obvious what the answer is going to be. It really has a lot to do with what the energy differential is and has been. And you have to be really honest with yourself in order to get to that place. Um, but it looks like you're, you're well developed um, in this area or you're becoming better developed in this area. And it's something that you're going to be able to, to do. So we've got the seven of spears that comes out here. And this speaks to the fact that not everybody is, um, is bringing their best to the situation. Um, you may be bringing the best to your situation and you know that if you are, but there is a sense that not everybody is and that you need to recognize that. It's a sense of also building a need for forgiveness and just understanding that sometimes we need to see people where they are and to, and to catch people where they are. You still bring um, this mental stability and independence from your own thoughts then there's also a sense of the healing that still has to be done and uh, communication, a, a message that needs to come to you, okay? A message that, so here's communication, or I'm sorry, here's development that still needs to be done, and that's in that area of emotional kind of self-management and self-mastery. And here is a, an apology. This is like a sense of an apology that needs to come your direction. Sorry, it happened again. You have to be prepared for um, for this to come in. You have to be prepared for this apology to come to you. So there is the only other thing these cards don't want to come out. The only other thing that I would say is to really, okay, focus on the beginning of this reading and where it kind of ends up with the learning that it feels like you're waiting for the learning to really be able to sink in like it can't right now. Not that you're not receptive, but that you, you have a hard time with that, but you get to a place where you are receptive. Consider that with regard to what you're experiencing here with things that are not necessarily working in your favor or are not necessarily all, um, not everybody working for the greater good. So I want to grab um, an oracle message for you. And sorry about all the interruptions. That just seemed like a, an, extor an extreme amount here in this one reading. Um, but I will tell you that the energy has been straight ahead and that those interruptions haven't stopped me. So 
this oracle card this is as always just going to be a little bit of advice for you something for you to consider power this is a power up sort of situation um, as you are entering the back half of this month looks like we're headed into an amazing spring so this is the definitely that kind of energy things coming back to life but there's more to it than that so there's just a lot of potential, a lot of decency, a lot of positivity here, a lot of things that um, that really are worth looking forward to. So as we're moving into the back half of March, just recognize that it looks like we're moving towards some really beautiful things. So I'm going to wrap it up here. This, um, this reading is pretty fabulous, and um, I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.